Hi. Greetings from beautiful Long Beach, California. My name is Bernie Pearl, and you are listening to Blues by the Beach. Today we're going to do National Blues Part 2. Uh, usually I tune in G-tuning, which I used last week. This time I tuned it to D-tuning, so I could do a different set of blues. And on my right is Michael Barry, been playing bass with me for about 35 years. Eventually he'll get it. I got to give the boy some time. But so we're pleased to be here. I want to start off with a uh, classic blues from the Mississippi Delta by Sun House. This is Sun House, Eddie House Jr. One of the remarkable finds when people started looking for traditional blues man who really had stopped playing around World War II, who had recorded in the 30s and early 40s. They went to look for Sun House and they found him, although he's from the Mississippi Delta and a uh, contemporary of the great Charlie Patton, he comes from that tradition. They found him living in uh, upstate New York, I believe in Buffalo or Rochester, I'm not sure which. You can look it up on, uh, you can Google it. And he was living with his daughter, and he had not played for many years. So they got him a guitar, and he didn't remember his songs. And I believe that the story goes that Alan Wilson, the guitarist and harmonica player from Can Heat, sat with Son and showed him how he used to play. Well, he gathered himself and was a sensational member of the of that cast of. Uh, People who had been found, Sun House, Booker White, Sleepy John Estes, had been found living and able to play. A magnificent singer. He is the epitome of the conflict between church and the blues. He went from one to the other. He was a child preacher, and then he went to the blues, and he spent some time in penitentiary, and uh, still did po very powerful religious songs. This is a song from that lineage of Delta Blues, about horses. So this one is the Shetland Pony Blues. Charlie Patton did the Stone Pony and there are all kinds of Pony Pony Blues. But this is the Sun House, my version of the Sun House version. And Michael, I have been waiting for several years to do this. You were there when we played the University of Mississippi, that lunchtime concert. Absolutely. And uh, the man who uh, was manager of several of the artists, including Sunhouse, Dick Waterman, well-known photographer and blues raconteur, uh, saw me with my national steel, and he saw me reaching in my pocket to do this song, and he said, well, that's not how Sunhouse used to carry his slide. I said, well, how did he do that? Well, he used to put it in his shirt pocket. I said, I can't do that, I'm my own roadie. Today is the day. I've never done this before. Yay. Hey, how do you like that? Why don't you catch me a pony and saddle up my black mare? Best in the world, but 
Johnson. Uh, he was, at least at the end of his life, he was a street preacher in Galveston, Texas. His passing was most tragic, and you can look that up. He was a brilliant and stunning vocalist and a stunning slide guitarist. One of those mentioned when you talk about who is the best that ever lived, Blind Willie Johnson comes up. In fact, his Dark Was the Night was sent up into outer space by NASA as representing American music. Uh, there are, there's only one photo of him. Actually, there's two back here. They're very hard to see, but I wanted to show you anyway. A little picture of Blind Willie on this, Yazoo. He was not an old man, and he used to sing with his wife, and it was absolutely exquisite music. The song I'm going to do. I usually do a month from now, around the 14th day of April, which is the anniversary of the sinking of, of the sinking of the Titanic. Um, we're a little bit early, but I very seldom get into this detuning. I stay in G most of the time, so I want to take this opportunity to do this song. The uh, Titanic is God moves on the water, and if you want to sing with me on the chorus, God move on the water. God move on the water is the chorus. And you'll hear it. Titanic sinking had a great religious meaning to poor people. And some of the verses have to do with poverty, but not in this particular song. But it always always has something to do with the arrogance of man building things and the Lord disposing. Uh, I had a professor in college who used to say, Man proposes and God disposes. It's like this. On the 14th day of April, year of 1912, my dance struck the iceberg.
Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right. Well, Fred McDowell, Miss Super Fred McDowell, he was called. Although he says, I'm calling Miss Super Fred McDowell, but I'm from Rossville, Tennessee. Probably 20 miles across the board or something like that. Here's a picture, a dramatic picture of Mississippi Fred. Shall I bring it up to the camera a little better? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do that. He, he uh, in his later years, he, he used to wear that little, what do you call that? It was not a serape, but he wore this little Mexican jacket. I guess he went to Mexico, and he liked that. It was a uh, something he enjoyed very much. This is a uh, an album on Bounty Label, Blues and Spiritual by Fred and Annie Mae McDowell. That was his wife at the time. Um, I remember one time he came out and uh, I said, how is your wife? And he said, well, I quit her. I got somebody else. She got, I think he said I got, she got too churchy. Uh, they did nonetheless wonderful spirituals together. And with the Hunter's Chapel Singers, from Como, Mississippi, in, in Como, Mississippi. There they are. And this is marvelous religious music that Fred did. However, I want to do actually two things that I learned from his playing. One of them, well, the connection is uh, several years ago, I was hired to be the guitarist by a uh, Native American theater company called Native Voices at the Autry. The Autry uh, Museum is right next to the Wells Fargo Theater where the company did their plays. And uh, they're called uh, Native Voices at the Autry. They are still an ongoing concern. And I was hired mainly to play incidental music during a play called Berlin Blues. Now this was uh, uh, a play written by, a series of plays actually, three, with blues in the title written by an Ojibwe or Chippewa uh, from Canada, playwright. And it had nothing to do with the blues per se, but it had to do with exploitation on an Indian reservation, exploitation of the culture and so forth. And my job was mainly to uh, play incidental music while the play went on. And it was, a, it was blues and so forth. They, they had used uh, uh, recorded music before that and the director finally said I want to have some live music so I did it It was a wonderful experience so I had uh, one piece that I had to compose and that was an overture as people came in that's a grand name for a little ragtime piece that I made up called the Berlin rag uh, another time I was asked to play a complete song was uh, in the during the intermission or to end the intermission uh, it was a two two act play uh, the first act would end and people would walk across the plaza to this little uh, restaurant which served buffalo burgers and whatnot and also served wine. So they had to figure out some way to get the people out of the uh, restaurant to come back into the theater. So they, they used to, run, I don't know what effect it had, but they used to run around saying, Bernie Pearl is going to play the blues now. So I, I was, a, I was a, uh, directed to play a song that would help bring people back in. And this is the song. It's a, it's a Fred McDowell song. Lord, I'm going way down south. I believe I'll carry my hood. Down by the river 
wash my trouble down.
And then the audience would come back in and they settle down and we get on with the second act. <laughs> I want to do one more tune there that originated with Fred McDowell. It's in his style. It probably is an older song than that. This, this one is titled Amazing Grace. Certainly the most famous thing. He did not write it or introduce it to the world, but he certainly had his own version of it. And I'm waiting for one of these days when they call that song, I'm going to play the backup for the way Fred McDowell played it. Very different than people sing it nowadays. At any rate, he also did a song called You Got to Move. Uh, Ry Cooter learned it and taught it to the Rolling Stones and they did a version of it and most everybody derives their version from the Rolling Stones. Uh, I go back to Fred McDowell. Very simple. And a real instance, a real example of less is more. Thank you, Michael Hello. Barry. It was indeed a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Anna Pearl, for doing our technical services. And thank you very much for watching this edition of Blues by the Beach with Bernie Pearl. And I hope you join me again next time.